Hey guys, so back in uh, Flore Collaborative Greenhouse. Uh, this is with the misters on. As you can see, it looks super cool. So this is the intermediate house and we will give a quick tour. Uh, Dodge in a fern there and a giant amorphophallus titanium uh, up in the rafters here. Let's spin you around and I'll do a quick walk through. So just this uh, beautiful mist coming on, giving everything a nice, nice water here. You can see the Louie Truncata Giant there, but it's late afternoon, what, probably about five o'clock, so three hours from sunset um, on this beautiful May day. Let's head on in. We will check out the lowland house, uh, I'm sorry, highland house. And looks like uh, it was just given a real nice water cooled everything off a bit and it's a beautiful probably 75 degrees in here and look at that one and that's a beautiful macrophylla there and we got Truce Madiensis, a couple hamadas that were just done cleaned up around this corner this one I think I already gave you kind of a pretty good tour of the, the Pentheans themselves, so we'll just do a quick overview. So I'll stand in this uh, far corner here, and we'll just slowly kind of pan around here. Some of the uh, collection plants here, then we have some of the helium pora here, some new divisions over on this side, and we have the smaller uh, sales table here. Uh, some relatively new arrivals, but I'm sure they'll be going out relatively soon. Uh, honestly, I didn't even know some of these hybrids existed, so they should be absolutely spectacular. Uh, quite a few species as well, obviously. There's a uh, Hamada and stuff like uh, Dubia, Spathulata, Diabolica crossed with Hamada. Over here we have some of the Raja uh, Edward Siana, which that of course was uh, bred by myself. And it is just a spectacular plant. So, so great to see uh, some of those in tissue culture here. Then we'll just uh, continue the walk around. But uh, such a beautiful afternoon. The sun's getting a little bit lower in the sky. We are aren't quite at that golden hour, but it's pretty nice for taking some videos and photos. Not too uh, harsh a light right now. Over here we have uh, Velosa, or as I like to call it, the hairy and rare sounding uh, Capensis. No, just kidding. It's actually a super, super cool plant. And then again, uh, some really nice orchids all on this uh, back wall here. I uh, definitely wish I knew a little bit more about those guys, but after seeing them at Mikael's greenhouse and in here, huh, I almost need a, a north-facing orchid wall if something like that would work, but we'll see. Man, and then we have the Platykyla crossed with Velosa here. I believe that's a, an EP plant originally, and it's super cool. You didn't see many uh, Velosa hybrids at all until very, very recently. Um, what else do we got going on? Uh, the nice Trusmodiensis. Let's see. Why is it not focusing? Oh, there we go. Uh, Trusmodiensis right here, hanging up. And let's go back into the uh, intermediate house. It's a pretty cool one. Let's It's like entering the rainforest. I just love that. Okay, look at that orchid. Ah, oh, such a cool plant. 
it doesn't even look real. I feel like it's like a angel mixed with Darth Vader somehow, so <laughs> pretty cool. What else? That looks like a Bashiana something or other. Maybe pure Bashiana. And Ryan said they had some new uh, aeroids come in recently, so I think they're pretty new arrivals, haven't quite settled in yet, but are already looking cool. I was definitely one that caught the aeroid bug uh, during COVID, so luckily I don't think I ever caught COVID, but definitely caught a few aeroids. Uh, favorite species are probably uh, Vichii, which is this one right here. Um, what else? I love Wiracanum, which I'm not entirely sure where that one is, but I'm sure they have it somewhere. And then um, Spiritus Sancti, which is another one I've wanted for a little while now, but not quite ready to spend a, a grand or 20 on a single plant, so we'll see. Ah, Oblica is another cool one, but it is back there in the mist, and we will keep our lens relatively clean for a little bit. And what else? Uh, lots of amazing seedlings here on this uh, sales table. Uh, I feel like Ryan does a really good job at keeping it. He has some lots of BE plants, some Westuba plants, lots of plants that he bred himself, uh, lots of plants from tissue culture, so you get quite a wide variety of stuff. Um, pretty good highland, lowland, and intermediate. And he has like the, the perfect setup where literally uh, one door to each, you feel like you enter the lowland tropics right there. Then you're in the intermediate tier, lots of the nice uh, hybrids do well here. And then at the very end are those highland plants that probably never get a whole lot over about 80 degrees. What else do we have going on here? Mm, I'm gonna look on down here. Again, like I said, just some crazy hybrids. What is this, Glandulifera, Platycyla, uh, and then ones that are so long, I think I couldn't say that in one breath if I had to. Maybe uh, I think Dom's about the only one who can do that from what I've seen. Uh, Vichii, Berbigia, Platycyla, uh, any of those Vichii hybrids seem to be quite sought after and turn out pretty well. Ooh, let's go over here. We'll take a look at some of the uh, cephalotus. Cephalotus are always always cool plants. Um, for me, they can be a little bit finicky. For a little while, they literally look perfect, not a single spot on them. And then all of a sudden, they not necessarily crash, but they just don't look perfect anymore. And then like need a repot, and then they look pretty good again, and then they kind of crash again and then they look great again. So it's kind of going through, always through an ebb and flow, it seems like with most cephalotus, at least in my collection. Uh, some people seem to have got it down pat, maybe a little bit more than I have. And I've seen some where they have like pots with a couple hundred pitchers on them. And I've always thought that was pretty cool, but I've, I've never grown a cephalotus quite to that level yet. I seem to always divide it up or, or trade one before it gets to be uh, quite that big. Okay, and look at this, the full-size Amorphophallus. Um, I think this is probably a 16-foot greenhouse, and it is almost to the very top, so it could flower probably any time now, so uh, I'm sure that will be quite the event when it does, because that is one of the most amazing flowers in the entire plant kingdom. So then let's head on into the lowland house. Whew. So it was probably over 100 degrees in here earlier today, but it's definitely dropped a little bit. We're at probably mid 80s right now, probably not quite 90. Um, man, just some amazing vichii uh, growing super well, even in the high heat. Uh, honestly, I never knew they could look this good in such high temperatures. So that is something I will have to keep in mind that they don't seem to mind the very hot and humid lowland uh, temps. So here's a nice uh, Priscillus, which never seems to get quite the love that it uh, probably deserves, but 
It doesn't have a lot of teeth, so not a big peristome. So most people seem to just kind of look it over, but it really is a beautiful plant. Then we have stuff like this Alata, um, Moreliana, some brand new arrivals here. Uh, stuff like Vichii. Uh, what else we got here? Sibuensis crossed with Meriliana. Oh my goodness, that's a nice one. That will get some of the biggest pictures I've ever seen. Some uh, nice Ampelaria that have these really like bronzy leaves with uh, kind of a nice lime green pitcher. Um, go on back here and little Hoya. Well, actually quite a large Hoya growing there. And uh, a green Alba Marginata, which is always a nice contrast. Sometimes the greens are really a, a beautiful plants. But uh, quite a bit of room for some lowlanders. So, Ryan, next time I'm out here, you gotta, gotta fill this up and we need about three or four times as many plants in here. And look at all the room we have up in the rafters, so. I can't wait to come back here in a couple years and see how things have grown. But it's been quite an experience. I always love going to see Nepenthes collections, as probably most of you know. And it's been really cool because I've got quite a bit of time to explore this collection all by myself. Kind of uh, appreciate not quite each and every plant, but a fair number of them. Um, well, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm not sure when or where I'm going to post it, but probably on uh, YouTube here. So we'll kind of go from there. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for my next video. Who knows where in the world I will be. Bye.